Here are the top five underrated but awesome third level spells. One. Summon Shadow Spawn. So Summon Shadow Spawn lets you summon a sh Shadow Spawn. It's an efficiently named spell. The creature is an ally to you and your companions and takes its turn immediately after yours. Better yet, it follows your commands without even requiring a bonus action from you, which is top tier action economy. It has an AC of 14, which is pretty terrible, but it does have 35 hit points and a good movement speed of 40 feet. And it also has dark vision out to 120 feet. It makes two attacks per turn, each at 1d12 plus 6, which is honestly quite comparable to the output of a typical frontline fighter at level 5. But it really gets terrifying with its special actions. First of all, it can scream to make every creature within 30 feet of it frightened if they fail a wisdom save against your spell save DC. The spell Fear is already a great third level spell, and this is close to that effect thrown on top of a body that can also deal damage. Just bear in mind that this scream affects you and your allies as well, so it is totally possible to summon a creature that is so scary it makes you shit your pants using your spell save DC. Just only use this if you're a good distance away. Then there are a few variations on the type of shadow spawn you can summon. Terror version has advantage on attack rolls against frightened creatures, meaning it can just beat the shit out of enemies who are crapping themselves with fear. The fear version can hide as a bonus action, letting it strike with advantage on the first attack of each round and also generally avoid damage. Finally, the despair version makes every creature within 5 feet of it so depressed their movement speed is reduced by 20 on their next turn. No wonder. Seriously though, 20 feet reduced movement speed is insane and there's no saving throw. This thing single-handedly stops a gelatinous cube just by standing next to it and reduces most enemy speeds to just 5 when combined with difficult terrain. Plus its stats only increase when you cast it at higher levels and it lasts an hour. This means you can have it pre-cast while exploring a dungeon to have an ally with 120 feet dark vision ready to alert you to danger. Another great option at this level is Summon Undead, but Summon Shadow Spawn gives you a slave, I mean a, a valued teammate, with more tactical options and a little bit more hit points. 2. Phantom Steed. Enough horsing around, it's time for the main event. Phantom Steed is a ritual spell, which is already awesome. It takes 11 minutes to cast, requires no concentration, lasts for one hour, and gives you basically a horse with 100 foot movement speed. But here's the kicker, if you dismiss it or it takes damage, it slowly fades away over the course of a full minute, giving you 60 seconds to dismount. This means that even if you ride it into combat and it takes a little bit of damage, you've still got 10 turns to use it. While mounted, its initiative changes to match yours, and it can take the disengage, dodge, or dash action. That's 200 feet of movement every turn in a fight. You will literally run rings around your enemies with that level of maneuverability. Alternatively, you can always dismount and crouch behind it to give yourself half cover for a boost to your AC. You know, if you're a little bitch. And seriously though, it's, it's not a bad idea. Fighting like a coward is how you stay alive. But even better, there is no restriction on how many times you can cast rituals, apart from the fact that it takes 11 minutes. This means that your whole party can have traveling mounts for free. Just cast the spell four times, so everyone in the party has a horse, and then as you're riding your first horse, continue casting the spell again. A new phantom steed will appear when you finish the spell, and then all you need to do is get off the first horse, which will have a couple of minutes of life left, and get on the new one. Repeat this endlessly, with the party swapping out the oldest steed every 11 minutes, and boom, your effective traveling pace is now 13 miles an hour for the team. And for the cherry on top, you decide what the steed looks like, so you can make it fit your character concept. If you want a giant pug for a steed, hell yeah. If you want a skeletal horse to match your evil necromancer, go for it. It's fun, powerful, doesn't cost you a spell slot, and you don't even need to prepare it each day. Ritual, baby. And now, a sketch, brought to you by NordVPN. <sighs> what you watching, bro? Oh, I was, I, I was just done. Give me that laptop. <sighs> What porn you been watching, bro? Ah, nothing weird, I swear! Give me your ad cookies! Give me your bank details! No! 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 <laughs> no! Wait! Please! I'm gonna slow down your internet speeds and stop you from watching 30 Rock in the UK! Only Americans can watch that show! Should have thought of that before you decided to be British! Oh no! Why did I have to be British? Stop! <gasps> 
Leave that pathetic British man's browsing information alone. No! Oh, damn. I forgot. I have NordVPN. NordVPN is the fastest VPN on the market, available on tons of devices, keeping you and your internet browsing safe and letting you stream content from anywhere in the world at the click of a button. And for the holidays, you can get Nord for 73% off and one month free by following the link below. Visit nordvpn.com slash dndshorts or click the link in the description to get the discount deal and browse safely online today. Number three, Sleet Storm. Sleet Storm is incredible for two simple words, heavy obscurement. Any spell coming your way that relies on sight is instantly countered. Banishment, counterspell, power word kill, dominate monster. All of them completely off the table by throwing up a sleet storm, which is also fucking massive by the way, 80 foot wide is insane. And you can cast it on top of a group of enemies if you want, creating difficult terrain and knocking them all prone if they fail a dex saving throw. Not only is that hilarious, but it also makes a great getaway tool or as a budget wall spell to divide a challenging horde of enemies into two easy to deal with groups. And that's before we even get to the combos you can pull off with heavy obscurement. Sorcerers get this spell. Grab Find Familiar via Magic Initiate and set them up on the other side of the Sleet Storm. Now you can blast enemies with Quicken Spell Fireballs as your bonus action while looking through its eyes. Meanwhile, they can't see you at all, so they can't target you back. Honestly, there are so many things you can mess around with when you have heavy obscurement on hand. But you want the real tactic? Come here. This is a horrifying spell for DMs to use on players. If a player is concentrating on a spell while in the storm, they need to succeed on a con save or lose concentration. And fun fact, this actually overrides the Warcaster feat. Warcaster says you get advantage on con saves if you take damage but this does not deal damage. The ability to just body magic users left and right makes Sleet Storm criminally underrated in comparison to the much more famous counter spell. Both are third level spells, and honestly, Sleet Storm might be the better option if you're gonna be fighting a lot of spellcasters. And of course, if you want to really challenge your players to think creatively, this is an amazing spell to give enemy spellcasters if you're the DM. Four, Melf's Minute Meteors. So Triple M tends to fall under the radar because of Fireball. Fireball is a great spell, but let's compare it with Melf's Minute Meteors. For a start, Triple M deals more damage. You summon six tiny meteors that appear in your space. They hover around you and you can fire two off each turn as a bonus action to deal 2d6 fire damage to everything within five feet of where they land. That means that over three turns, it's dealing 12d6 damage as opposed to Fireball's 8d6 all at once. And both are subject to the same dexterity save requirements. But then Triple M also lets you split up that damage way more efficiently. If your enemies are spread out, this is so much better than Fireball, and it only takes your bonus action to fire them off, meaning you can still blast away with your main spell each turn. But most importantly, you can set up Triple M before combat if you know you're going into a fight. Just cast the spell, get your six orbs of setting people on fire, and then when you enter combat, you've got free damage at no loss to action economy. Finally, unlike Fireball, these explosions don't do damage to objects. So if you're ever in a situation where you're fighting in a town or an orphanage and you don't want to bring the place down, this is way better than Fireball. Granted, this depends on how evil you are, but Fireball does carry the disadvantage that it could potentially kill dozens of innocent people if the flames get out of hand. At the very least, you're gonna be making some people homeless. Melf's Minute Meteors is the smarter, subtler Fireball, giving you more damage over time and more opportunities for creative, tactical thinking. It is 100% worth taking over Fireball if someone else in your party has Fireball already and they can handle the blasting. Five. Tiny Servant. Tiny Servant takes one minute to cast and it gives a tiny, non-magical object life. It sprouts little arms and legs and does what you tell it to. You can command it to take an action as your bonus action or you can give it a general command to follow. It has an AC of 15, 10 hit points, blind sight at 60 feet, can attack with a simple slam action and lasts for eight fucking hours. Now, the first thing to point out is that the tiny objects can take any action, which means it can sort of act a bit like a familiar. It can take the help action to give you advantage on a skill check or give you advantage on the first attack of each turn. But it also combos amazingly with a commonly disregarded cantrip, Magic Stone. 
You can cast Magic Stone as a bonus action to infuse three pebbles with magic, and any creature can attack with them using your spell modifier, dealing 1d6 plus your spell modifier damage. This gets really powerful if you upcast Tiny Servant to level 4, because you get three Tiny Servants, not just one. All you need to do is issue a general command to your servants that whenever you hand them some pebbles, they throw them at an enemy. Kaboom! You now have 3d6 plus 15 damage coming at your enemies from 60 feet away, through heavy obscurement by the way, blind sight for the win, at the cost of just a bonus action each turn. That is very nice damage at such a low resource cost, especially for blade singers, because you're going to be attacking as your action anyway, so you're not missing out on casting a leveled spell after casting one as a bonus action. But what's really busted about this spell is that 8 hour length. This means that we can rest trick Tiny Servant. Rest tricking is where you cast a spell at the very end of a long rest. For example, in the seventh hour of your long rest, you cast Tiny Servant. When the long rest finishes, you regain all your spent spell slots, meaning you effectively get seven hours of Tiny Servant completely for free. Yes, I know this is really cheesy, but it is 100% within the rules. And here is the designer of 5e confirming that you can do it. It is both rules as written and seemingly rules as intended. Finally, there are endless pranks and shenanigans you can get up to with Tiny Servant if you're just messing around. From stealing things to pulling a noble's pants down to pretty much whatever you can come up with. And you also get to flavor the spell by choosing any tiny objects that might have significance to your character. Remember to check out the Patreon to join in D&D games with the community and get access to a ton of awesome maps and races. Also remember to like and subscribe, check out other videos on this channel, and yeah, bye.